I'm going to say a word that we might consider a little bit taboo or dirty or shameful and a subject that we don't really want to talk about. It's mainly when we think about it, we just want to say, shh. And that's the word depression. You know, depression is an ever-increasing problem that is growing among people, but it's one of those subjects that we don't like to talk about. We kind of wish that it would just be swept underneath the rug and no one would talk about it, that it was just something that we may be struggling with, but we don't want anyone to know about it. You know, as a person who is a certified Christian counselor, this is something that I'm seeing more and more in my ministry, is the amount of people who are coming just saying, you know what, I'm depressed. I don't know what to do, I'm struggling with it, but I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want, to want people to even know about it because it's embarrassing and shameful to me. And that's something that people are feeling. The more I talk with people, that's something that we're seeing more and more in our society. They're saying, I'm depressed, but I don't want anyone to know about it. And because I don't want anyone to know about it, I'm just stuffing it in my heart and in my body, and I just don't want to deal with it. I don't want to think about it, so I just will be depressed. One of the things that I talked with Christians especially about is, and I've talked with people all over the state about this issue, about depression, is that a lot of people, Christians say, you know what, I struggle with the concept of depression. Because I read through the Bible, and I read all the passages of Scripture about how Christians ought to be. Rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> Again, I say rejoice. Or the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and so forth. And they say, you know what, the Bible says not to be anxious. Christ says, come all who are weary and burdened. And they, we read all those passages. So many Christians come up to me and say, you know what, I just feel like this is how we ought to be as Christians, but I'm not feeling this. I'm not being like this. What's wrong with me? Am I the worst Christian ever? And because of this mentality, people feel like they're horrible Christians, and they struggle with it, and they don't want to deal with it. You know, depression is something that a lot of you have probably experienced sometime in your life. Maybe even momentary. Maybe a loved one passed away. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe finances went down. Maybe something just hit your life. I know in my life I've struggled with depression on and off again. But one of the things that I realize as I teach people about depression is that it affects every aspect of your life. Something that affects your attitude, it affects your relationships, it affects your worldview, and it affects even your faith and your service to God. And that's why one of the things, it's such an issue that we need to talk about. That we don't want to say, shh, anymore and sweep under a rug. We want to deal with it. But one of the great things that I can encourage you with is that God can help you overcome depression in your life. Do you believe that? Absolutely. And here's the amazing thing too. Great people of faith throughout scripture dealt with depression. Did you know that? That great people of faith sometimes dealt with depression. But they teach us actually how to overcome it. And it kind of shows us that these people, like Elijah, the, the book of James tells us that Elijah was a man just like us. And sometimes he struggled with issues of depression as well, as we'll cover today. But even so, we see people like Job. He was the greatest man of the East, a man blameless and walked righteously before God. But you read through the book of Job, you see he's depressed. You see King David, the mighty giant killer, great king of Israel. You read through his Psalms, half the Psalms are actually laments. They're saying, God, I'm struggling, <laughs> help me. You read about Jeremiah, a great prophet of God, and he's obviously depressed. And he even wrote a book of the Bible called Lamentations. You see, I mean, this is something that we see time and time again, that depression is there. But one of the things that we understand is God is there ready and willing to help. That God cares. One of the amazing things that we read in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, and places like Psalm 55, verse 22, makes known that we are to cast all of our burdens and our cares and our anxieties upon God. Because he does care. And that's something that we as Christians, as people, need to realize about our God. He cares about us. He understands us. 
He cared so much for you that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for you. But not only to die on the cross for you, but that Christ is the perfect high priest who can sympathize with every one of your weaknesses. He understands all the hurt. He understands all the pain. He was a man of sorrows. He was a man who cried. He was a man filled with compassion. He cares. That's why when Christ invites us all who are weary and burdened and he will give us rest, Christ actually means that. Christ cares about us. We even know that Philippians chapter 4 tells us to rejoice and not to be anxious. But in those times, we really need God. That's where the avenue of prayer is so powerful. I don't know about you, but I couldn't make it through life without prayer. I couldn't make it through life without God. And one of the things that we understand is we must find joy. The Bible tells us we can have joy. The Bible tells us to be joyful. So how do we do that? We know life happens. We know people die. We know problems happen. We know health degrades. We know all those different things happen. But how can we have joy? Because sometimes we're filled with depression. Sometimes we're filled with anxiety. But one of the things that we often do is when we're depressed, we just don't feel like doing anything. We don't necessarily feel like serving God. We don't necessarily want to be around people. The best thing we want to do is to stay in our pajamas, stay in bed, fall asleep, wake up, eat junk food, go to sleep, wake up, eat more junk food, and then <laughs> fantasize and be depressed again. Anyone ever do that? There's a rise in Hagen dazs cells, I can tell. But one of the things that I'm going to teach, uh, teach today is we want to be ones who are glorifying God. And the, and the fact is, depression often thwarts our service for God. And that's why we see the servants of God throughout scriptures. They'll be depressed for a while. And God will even let them be depressed for a while. But then he's going to have the expectation. Now get up and work. And that's the amazing thing is, when we make our lives about glorifying God, that's where true joy comes in. It's not about how much money you have. It's not about how good looking you are, though you are very good looking people. It's not about what car you drive, but it's all about glorifying God. And this is where we're going to find our help. Now, I'm going to tell you something that might sound a little bit offensive to you. But when I deal with depressed people, I tell them this and they get really offended right off the bat. But after they think about it for a little while, this is one of the truths that actually helps them overcome depression. And for me, who's struggled with depression before in his life, I can tell you personally, this is a truth I did not want to accept, but it's one that is very true. And it will help you overcome it. But one of the reasons why people don't overcome depression is because of selfishness. Did you know that? Because oftentimes when you're depressed, who are you thinking about? You're thinking about yourself. You're thinking about my wants, my needs, my feelings, how people are treating me, how life is coming upon me. In, in your time of depression, how often are you spending most of your time thinking about other people? You see, that's one of the things why serving God is so important. Because when we stop taking the focus on us and say, well, my wants, my needs, my feelings are more important than everyone else's wants and needs and feelings, then I'm thinking wrong. But when I think about God and I'm glorifying God, then I think I'm thinking about God's wants, God's needs, God's feelings, God's response by people. And that's what matters. I, I turned depression upside down by learning to be selfless. That's the amazing thing we learn about overcoming depression is when you stop being selfish and you start being selfless, that's when you start realizing joy. I mean, doesn't it feel good when you're active and you help somebody? Absolutely. God has created that within us to feel good when we are serving other people. But one of the things that I, we also need to do is we need to redefine happiness. You know, people often say, you know what, I'm just not happy. Ever say that? I'm just not happy. I'm not happy with my life. I'm not happy with my spouse. I'm not happy with my job. I'm not happy with blah, blah, blah. Okay? <laughs> I want us to get rid of that because... What you're doing there when you say that is you're making happiness an idol in your life. And you're making that an unachievable goal. Happiness is really an unachievable goal. Because all the things that make you happy will only make you happy temporarily. In our definition of happiness. And so we'll pursue happiness. And when we pursue happiness with all of our might, we're actually making ourselves an idol. Because we're saying, my wants, my needs, my feelings. So much that I'm pursuing happiness over the glory of God. 
You know, the Bible tells us sometimes we're going to suffer and be persecuted and hate him because of Christ. That doesn't...